Welcome everyone to another installment of The Persistent Rumor. My name is Chocolate Yoda, spelled Y-O-D-D-A-H, because film studios are litigious. With me as always is my heterosexual life mate, Chancleta. I know I'm not in a, in a, I don't have a jovial tone on me right now. Uh, it's because I'm not in a jovial mood. But anyway, please, please say hello, Chancleta. Hello, Chancleta. And uh, the rest of you people. You know, while you're at it, just do the like thing right now. That'll get it over with. We're moving on. Okay, so like I said, I'm, I'm not in a jovial mood, so I, so pardon me. Um, but um, the, What's you know, this you thing about? with, with this thing with Derek Chauvin, mm -hmm. um, I know everybody's celebrating. Everyone's looking at it as, as a victory. And I get that. Um, and, you know, I hope every horrible thing that can happen to that guy happens. Um, but, you know, it's, it's one, it's one case. How many people have been shot since last year? Since, since, since George Floyd got murdered, how many more unarmed black men were killed by police? I mean, there's been a handful just in the last couple months, you know, it's, uh, it's been, it's been a lot, man. Um, right. I think people are going around saying things like, oh, justice is served and everything. And I think the problem and they're is not that wrong, it, but it's one it, case. Right. And it was the most egregious one where it's like, you know, there's sometimes where it's like, oh, a cop just pulled a gun and made a, you know, you could say, oh, he made a rash decision or whatever. This is a guy who leaned on his neck eight minutes and 46 seconds. The only thing that would have came out better in this case is was if the jury went in and deliberated for eight minutes and 46 seconds and was out and just said, yeah, guilty on all charges. Um, but, you know, I don't I don't see it so much as justice as you know, but it is accountability, right? Like, I think justice would be like the system starts to rectify. And I think that, you know, but I do think that, um, that this is a step in the right direction. It is, it is that it, you're holding somebody who did that accountable, right? Um, and hopefully this is something, you know, this is the, the mark of something moving forward so that we can start rectifying this problem in the system. Um, I, it, it was a terrible tragedy to see happen. It happens so often that we're, you know, that we're getting, you know, I, I remember Amadou Diallo. That was so many years ago and it was in the Bronx while I was living in the Bronx and in a neighborhood where I frequent, like in the Soundview area, like I'm, I'm there, you know what I mean? I walk there all the time and I, and, and I saw that and it was like, wow, that, that happened. And you know what I mean? Like I, I've heard accounts from my friends who were there when it happened. You know, and it's like they opened fire on this guy like it was a hail of bullets coming and it was all a misunderstanding. And it's like, how does that happen? Right. That was my first uh, like real like eye eye opener. Like, wow, that that can happen. Right. Um, and so and since then, it's like, you know, then you start hearing about all the other accounts that happened prior to that before I was sort of privy to that, you know, that was the one that like kind of hit home because it was so close to home. And then since then it was like, wow, this happens like every week. This is crazy. And it's the idea where it's like, you know, like if you, if you've never seen a car on the road and suddenly you become interested in a car or you buy that car and now you see it everywhere. Right. It's that idea where it's like, you know, it just starts to kind of like, you know, like open your eyes and open your mind because now that you saw it, it's like, you can't unsee that. And then you see it everywhere. And it's like, I don't understand how, I, I really don't understand how people like anyone can see this and not see this as a problem. This is a major problem. And this would be a major problem in any country and any city, any suburb, no matter where it happens. This is not something that we could just let slide. And it's not good for any race any group of people, anything. This is complete, a complete disaster. Okay. Um, that, yeah, I mean, I'm not in love with that comparison about <laughs> recognizing cars on the road, but I, 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 I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, 
you know, it's, um, and here's why it's not like, rec you know, the cars on the road thing. I, I understand you're alluding to pattern recognition and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. but it hasn't worked that way. Mm -hmm. Right. It hasn't worked that way because even as of last year, when all the protesting began, when the riots began and the looting began, and by the way, those are three different things. Protesters protest, rioters riot, looters loot. Mm -hmm. They are not conflated. They are not interchangeable. These are three separate types of events. Right. And when those things were going on, I kept seeing the white folks that I know, or, you know, or, or just white folks online saying, oh, I, 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 I didn't know it was this bad or, you know, when did it get this bad? Or, oh my God, you know, this is the word. And, and I just, I just kept saying, no, this ain't new to us. This is new to you, even though it's not really new to you. I mean, like you said, back, yeah. these stories go back essentially to your entire, uh, you, your entire uh, life that you've been cognizant of social issues. Mm -hmm. So from your teenage years, moving forward, right. you, this was part of your life. And I can't remember a time when this was not part of my life. And since this is not new, since we can go back to Emmett Till in 1955 and we can mm -hmm. go way farther back into the 1800s, 1700s, fucking 1600s. None of this shit is new. Right. So this whole thing of, oh my God, what's going on? That That's why it's it's not an apt comparison to say it's like recognizing other things. That's reticulation and pattern recognition and all that shit that the brain is great at. But this is a, this is a thing that is destroying families, killing human beings, and people refuse to accept that it's a real part of American culture. Right. And it is almost exclusively American. Are there countries where, are the, where there are these kinds of feuds? Of course there are. There have always been. But from slavery to now, 2021 marks 402 years of this shit. Mm -hmm. And that's why this fucking piece of shit murdering cocksucker Chauvin could fucking so casually just take someone's life. Like it was nothing. Like, like George Floyd's life had zero value to this mother. Like you, like the idea of me kneeling on someone's neck for even a minute is like so disgusting. Like you would have to, I would have to be in so enraged. Let me ask you a question. Anybody ever cut off your air supply? Um, Someone tried a while back, yeah, like in a, in a fight, um, you know, mm -hmm. but they didn't succeed. But I mean, okay, it, so it no, so no one ever did. But it feels panicky, like when they're trying to do it, like you get panicked. Yeah. So it's... right. So you don't, but you don't have a reference point for what I'm talking about. No. So in martial arts, that's a thing that we do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I know what it feels like to have my air cut off. Mm -hmm. And if you get beyond five or ten peck, five or ten seconds. Mm -hmm without flying into a full panic, you're superhuman. Yeah. Even when you know you're in a martial arts class, this is a drill we're doing, this is supposed to be happening, your body, your brainstem mm -hmm. is like, we're fucking dying. Yeah. That's 10 seconds. Yeah. 10 seconds. And this guy was almost nine minutes there was a grown man crying for his mom dude crying screaming over and over again that he was and i didn't watch the video i refused to watch the video i don't, don't. watch any of these videos don't. ever it's horrible 
Of course it is. Yeah. Just hearing about it was horrible enough. Yeah. So this is this is the situation. The, the point that I'm trying to make is that this cop felt really comfortable doing what he was doing, knowing that he was snatching the life away from another human being. D don't tell me he didn't know. Right. Don't tell me it was an accident. Don't tell me it was unintentional. I've been it in wasn't. martial arts too fucking long since I was 13 years old. I know how to kill people. Listen, I choose yeah. not to, but I know how to do it. And one of the best and easiest ways of doing it is cutting off the air supply on both sides of the neck. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me this was this was just some aberrant thing no this guy was cool as a cucumber Absolutely. while he murdered somebody yeah he and the only reason it wasn't first degree murder is because he didn't plan it ahead of time right but this was in all other ways murder yeah okay why was he so comfortable doing that why did that badge entitle him to doing that so yeah fan fantastic there's a conviction but there's still a system that supports those motherfuckers. That's right. The 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 chauvins of the world. Mm -hmm. And don't tell and me about good cops versus bad cops because the good cops haven't done a fucking thing. Yeah, I mean, here's the. Truth. I love police. I respect police. I I, I I I my life was saved by a police officer when I was six years old. He jumped in a pool and and stopped me from drowning. Yeah. So I I respect the job, but the system. The system is broken. Absolutely. You, you're churning at, you are, you're, this is what you're doing. You're saying, okay, we're not going to do too much of a psychological evaluation. Uh, basically, if you're breathing and can write your own name uh, and, and can pass shooting at a target, you know, after three months of training, you, you become a police officer. Oh, and by the way, we're going to give you the power of judge, jury, and executioner, and we're going to give you a lethal weapon to have on your fucking hip at all times. Right. That's the fucking problem. Right. Not one cop that got convicted of murder rightfully, but the system. The system is so fundamentally broken. This, this interaction between police and citizens is in, as far as I could tell, completely unique to America. There is no other country where this kind of shit happens. At least not in a developed world, no. You know, I can't you, even think of a developing country where this happens. You're probably right. I mean, it, you, usually when things like this happen, you, you, you know, you think of like, you know, completely, you know, war-torn countries or things like, you know, things like that. Uh, you know, you might think of Syria or, you know, something, something along those lines. And even they don't see that kind of. Um, I'd, I'd love to do a study of Syrian police. I bet you it's not nearly as bad. Yeah. I'm I'm going to go out and, you know, normally I don't like to make statements like this without researching first, but I I feel pretty confident that the that the horrific interactions that police have with citizens in America, white, black, brown, yellow, purple are fucked up beyond recognition. It's it's a terrible situation. I mean, think about if you really think about the conviction and why he was convicted it was like look how egregious this act had to be for us to get a conviction like like every every other situation has been yeah no 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 problem the the officer has been reinstated and they're working again um in some cases they may get fired see you later Rare. um you know right um and i've seen officers get fired for hurting dogs accidentally yeah right you know, and it's just like, and, and so, and in a lot of those cases, when they get fired, all that happens really is that they just go to another jurisdiction and get a job there as a cop. So no, you know, just slap on a hand, see you later. And so that's the problem with the system. It's just like, wow, like you have to go that deep, right? Like it has to be so like, whoa, dude, like you, you know, the, the dude was laying down handcuffed and you lean on his neck, like what's up with that like 
there's people talking to you telling you telling you to get off uh at that point at some point between you know before that the other officers kind of just like stop holding and you know and you're still there with, and this you is know, what i'm saying co- about this good cop thing like right. where were the good there were three other police officers there 75 percent of the people that were there did nothing to fucking stop this right you know okay, and meaning that, the police since yeah. you know so you know I, I just I'm so tired of the good cop conversation. You know, I, I know I, they're I out there. You. I know there are police that are not doing horrific things to people, but unfortunately, they're not stopping the bad police. And that's all I give a fuck about. Right. And that's really what has to happen. Right. And it's um, not going to happen unless the system is overhauled. You know what? Well, because defunding because... police is a terrible fucking phrase, but that's what has to happen. It's and it's it doesn't mean getting rid of the police. It what it means is reorganizing. Right. Okay. You take you 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 go in and give them a different kind of training, a different kind of orientation. Take away the right to kill. You know, like you got something. There's there's got to be a way. There's too many other countries that do this right in large populations, in urban populations, in mixed race populations, you you can go right down the line check, uh, checking every box as a comparison to America. And you when you look at that cuz you know, yeah, America's got a big population, I get it, but why isn't this happening in China that has a population four times the size? I think what needs to happen uh, and also is just that there needs to be more of an introduction to like really like uh, like getting to know your community. You know what I'm saying? I think there's too many cops. That's that going to just... be worthless if they still have the power of judge, jury, and execution. Uh, I, I I agree. I mean, that's the first. But step. That is a that is a step, and I and I don't know how they don't know their community. They walk around the same fucking beat all the time. So I, if I, they if they're not learning about their community, it's probably because they don't give a. F- probably. It has to be because I mean, here's the thing, right? Like, if you, you your job is to basically serve and protect your community, right? And so, you know, you get to know you get to know people in your in your just like the mailman, right? You go into different houses and you see people, and after like ten years of being, you know, a mailman, like you know everybody, at least everybody that you get to deliver mail to that you see at home, right? Like, hey, how you doing? Here's your mail, blah blah blah. You know, sort of how the things go, and the same thing should be for cops. Like, you know, the kids that are you know, you know, the kids that are in the neighborhood. I remember, I remember, you know, um, like certain teachers would stand outside of school and they would know kids that didn't even go to that school and they would just say hi, like, you know, um, and, and, you know, like it, there was, there was that kind of involvement in, in, you know, in communities. Right. And the same thing with cops, like, you know, like, Hey, get to know your community. Like don't work in a community that you're scared of, or that you have a pro- bias against, like, that's ridiculous. Right. Like, in New York City, a lot of the cops that are working, like NYPD, a lot of the cops that are working in the Bronx are from the Bronx, right? A lot of the cops that are from uh, are are working here are from here, or maybe Long Island or something like that. But but by and large, they're from here, so they're in the community. They know they they know the stuff, and still things happen because what happens sometimes is that you know the Bronx sometimes gets a little bit heavy and, you know, people get scared and it's what it is, but that doesn't, this is, you know, I'm sorry to cut you off, man. This whole fucking community officer, Joe Bolton, it hasn't done a fucking thing. It hasn't done anything. I don't care Uh, about that. I, we need to overhaul the fucking system. Anything short of that is just the same as it ever was. People have been talking about the same fucking bullshit my whole life, and it's accomplished nothing. I've never heard that particular. I've never heard that particular take. Um, the community thing. I've been hearing that my whole life. Uh, I, I I haven't. I just thought you know it was something that to me it's that you know like uh, I've always seen like you know especially when I see like white officers in the Bronx. You know what I mean? Like where it's like, oh yeah, what well, you 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 don't know this neighborhood, dude. You don't know anything about here. You don't know how people in the in the projects live or anything. Well, I mean, like, and you I can't think that's make just that you can't make that assumption. There are white people that live in the Bronx, and it's, <laughs> you don't it, know what it, the Bronx it's, is about. It's it's very rare. 
I, I you know I'm not saying that it doesn't exist but it's it's rare and you can tell when they don't live here there's a certain arrogance about them like you know like they're better than you and things like that and you know those are the guys that are usually like you know like I got approached by white cops one time because I had a cell phone and these guys rushed out of their car with with gun hands in their gun like ready like let me show you me your hands what do you got there and this was like in the late 90s like you know pop, cell phones weren't that popular at the time and you know my friend just asked me about my cell phone because a lot of people didn't have cell phones so it was just kind of like an interesting thing to look at and i was just showing them yeah i got this blah 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 just showing them telling them about the price that i paid or whatever like just showing them the features and you know these guys just ran up on me like whoa like what are you so scared about bro like you know take it easy you know but that's and, and that's what I'm talking about. And by and and I and I believe that happens whether someone knows the community or not. Um, only because that's that's the way the system trains these guys. Yeah. You know, it they go into this as an us versus them thing. I've known plenty of police officers in my real life, and they've told me this. You know, just like the mafia, the, the mob guys only hang out with mob guys. Cops only hang out with cops. Yeah. And everybody else is a scale. Mm -hmm. Okay? Everybody else is a, a, a potential perp. And they have an us versus them mentality. This, this trial was the first time that I saw the blue wall of silence crumble. Mm -hmm. This was the first time that cops said, you know, this is what really fucking happened. And didn't just yeah. blindly protect another cop. Right. All right. First time. Okay. So we, it has to start from the ground up. You can't, you can't just go to the end result because once they're in the community, they're, they're in the community, whether they live there or not, mm -hmm. but it's already too late. We got to start from the, the philosophy of what policing is, mm -hmm. then we have to look at the methodology. How do we create a police officer? What are we doing now? And that's creating the end results that we're getting. And where do we make those changes? And I believe you, you have to defund the police. You have to reallocate the resources. You know, for starters, how about doing economic development? in an area that's going to reduce crime tremendously. When Camden, New Jersey, that was a hotbed right. of, of, of crime and, and all sorts of mayhem, mm -hmm. they, when they defunded the police in 2012, crime, overall crime dropped 50%. Right. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's and a Camden, serious thing. And Camden is still considered a pretty bad area. Like, right, you know but I mean, I mean yeah. imagine imagine what it would be without the defunding of the police. Yeah, exactly. All right, and again, Democrats did a sh job branding this because it's it, it sounds like, oh, we're just going to take money out of the police force or we're going to get right. rid of police. Because really that's how about, people are yeah. talking about it. And it's really about just like, you know, taking away some of their job. Like, you know, it's almost like this thing where we start giving these jobs to police that they're not qualified for, like handling your mental health cases, yeah, right? Like where getting like, cats out of trees and, yeah, you know, like, ha ha definitely handling me mental health issues. Yeah, don't don't call the cops for that. Yeah. You know, when, when, when that call comes into 911, that it would be better placed with a local hospital or mental health care facility that has people trained to deal with that because when ambulances show up they don't have the outcomes that that they do when police cars show up right exactly okay you don't have those confrontations you don't have the violence you don't have the tension you don't yeah. you don't you don't have the death toll that you have so obviously they're doing something way fucking different than what right. police are doing right and, you know, and, and here's the thing. And it's like, I understand that sometimes you have to get physical, you know, um, and, and it's okay, but that's what you're trained for. You're trained to be able to, you know, uh, take somebody down and, and, you know, basically like render them, you know, uh, you know, are you referring to EMTs or police? Both, both no, are the cops don't get that much training in that stuff. Maybe they should. It's the point. Right, well, like of EMTs, course they should, yeah. <laughs> of course. And, and, yeah, and, they, and, they, that, and that's part and so of the part of their is... fear comes from not being able 
to handle a physical altercation. Right, because so That's many why for they their reach guns. for their gun right away. Yep. Right. And so we we've, we've got to get to the point where we're not overwhelming them with things that are better left to other people. You know, there are things that firefighters can handle, there are things that EMTs can handle, and let's have police just handle crime. And we also have to end the war on drugs. It's complete horse. Yeah, that absolutely. is probably one of the biggest factors to the way police interact with citizens, looking for fucking dime bags and, you know, let people get high. Who gives a fuck, man? Let adults feel the way they want to feel. You know, I mean, it, you can change your mood by spinning around in place. You're literally altering your brain when you do that. And, you know, you might even fall down. Why isn't that illegal? Because if, if heroin is illegal, uh, if pot, which is still illegal in way too many places, you know, it, all these substances that are on schedule one for narcotics are all substances that make people feel good. You know, it, it really just comes down to the fact that, you know, the laws tend to favor uh the the major well the the majority right um and what happens is that the minority suffer as a result for instance you know it's like these it, you know i feel like laws are made in a way where it's like well you know what are black people doing what are hispanic people doing that we can nab them for right like that's what it feels like because it, it's like these well that's you what know, jim crow was Exactly. And so what happens now is that, you know, like I, I remember serving in, in jury duty, and I think I brought this up before, where I'm listening to all these indictments. I'm on a grand jury. I'm here li listening to all these indictments about all these drug, uh, these uh, drug charges. And I'm and like 95% of them were like, yep. And, uh, you know, oh, uh, he was in a school zone. I'm like, so everybody's in a school zone because of the way you made school zones happen, right? This guy is in a, in his, in front of his house, whatever, but because there's a school within like two miles or something like that, which there's a school, like if you're in a city, there's a school like within two, three miles from you, no matter where you are. So essentially you're in a school zone all the time. So then that's an so extra it's penalty. To, it's just a gotcha thing. It's, exactly. It's, it's, a way, and so, it's a way to cast a big net. And this is what I'm talking about because exactly. the courts are clogged up with drug cases. And this is if, if we, we could probably talk about uh, the whole search and seizure process and also asset forfeiture process. But the, the drug wars have created havoc when it comes to how police interact with citizens. Yeah. Let that all go. Leave that alone. Let people fucking get high if they want to get high. What's the fucking difference? Yeah. We have laws that punish people if they fuck up while they're high. Right. Right. So if you if you operate a, a vehicle and fuck up, it, you know, if you're impaired in any way because of mood and mind altering substances, there's already laws for that. Right. The idea of of putting people in prison because they wanted to feel good through a substance is juvenile and it's nothing more than a cash grab it's an excuse to rape society of money and throw away entire generations of people right because let's remember when those people get out of prison their lives are they're never the same they have no opportunities even though we say that that going to jail is your payment to society horse you yeah. never stop paying no. Okay. In some places you can't vote if you're a felon. Uh, it, most jobs won't hire you if you have a record. Not at all. The so, system, yeah, the system is stacked so, against so you. So you just, you just fucking people over from start to finish. Yeah. And there's no, there's no semblance of anything remotely close to rehabilitation. So that's out the window. There's nothing, you know, like there's no, there's no like, you know, trying to, to, to educate you or anything like, you know, there's, there's nothing like that. It's basically just, Hey, listen, here's food and shelter. That's it. Right. And so what, what are we doing exactly? 
What, what's the what's the point? What is what is the advantage? There is of no having point. A, the point. The point mainly is money, as far as I can tell. I mean, exactly. And so when you know, everything becomes because, about because money, it's also let, let's be honest about the drug pipeline, right? Like a, a lot of that is is facilitated by the very people that that are saying they're against it. You know, because it like makes Ronald money. Reagan was the biggest drug dealer in America. Yeah, I've heard uh, so many stories about that. I've never really looked into it, but yeah, I, you know, yeah, just read just read the Iran Contra hearings. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll learn all about it. Um, Tom Cruise made a film called American Made that covers that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Freeway Rick Ross, the real Rick Ross, the real Rick Ross. Yeah, that dude was moving Reagan's drugs. Yeah. Okay. And it's and it's and and but this is what it is because what happens now is that you have a system. The war on drugs is essentially a system to make money. That's all it is. It can't stop. If if well, it you can, know, it, it can. It, well, it can. If, if honest people with a conscience get into power and decide, because all of this comes down to will. Yes. It's not. It's not that resources are missing. It's not that funding is missing. Imagine if you took all that money on this fake fucking drug war and applied it to communities. Wow. Yeah, right. What a fucking difference that would make. You know, if you, if you, I mean, again, look at the outcomes in the countries that have made all drugs legal or at least decriminalized them. Yeah. It's astonishing. It's you astonishing. Look at Portugal in recent years. You know? Phenomenal story. Yeah. And it's, right. you know, and it goes and, and, and it and it just like it, it's not like this is uh, that's like a one off story. Right. Like it, it almost happens. It happens like that invariably. Right. I, if and, you look at so, all the countries that have a completely different orientation to crime fighting and criminal justice and even incarceration, because it, it's it's this thing where they're only going to focus on the most aberrant behavior the the behavior that's truly destructive in society mm-hmm. so obviously if someone's going around assaulting people that's a problem sure obviously murder's a problem rape is a problem uh you know theft of goods if someone's breaking and entering all the, those things are real problems and those people need to be removed from society and Give it a timeout, essentially, and say, okay, listen, this is how you fucked up, and we're going to help you so that we can reintegrate you into society so you can be a productive member of society. Right. And so you don't have these savage prisons, because even even from county jail on up, it's, it's horrific. Yeah. It's almost like gladiator school or some wild like that i've heard stories you know, once about you get Rikers. once you get to medium security it's a nightmare yeah and then and then max is it's its own level of hell yeah so we why don't other countries treat prisoners like garbage well because their goal is to reintegrate that person into society in a productive way right what's america's goal if you're if you're taking someone that sold a dime bag of pot and dehumanizing that person when you let them back into society what the fuck do you expect to happen especially when they don't have the ability to get a job uh when they don't have the the you know in some cases not they don't have the right to vote so um, what do you expect to happen exactly what what, what Recidivism. If, if, if you if you rob them of their humanity the the thing they're going to do is go well fuck it i know one way to make money and that's how you get recidivism and of then course. basically, and basically, that's what that's what you what that's what they want. That's and the how they rate make of their em- money. the rate of recidivism in America is like sixty six or sixty seven percent. That's yeah. insane. But when prison is for profit, but when you, you got to guarantee system, customers, when you set up the system to do that, that's what it is. It's just, and that's what needs to fix. That's what needs to be fixed. That from a systemic level, 
that needs to be fixed. And that's the problem that people can't have a conversation about because anytime we talk about it, it's like, oh, you must hate cops. Blue lives matter, whatever the case is. It's like, no, nobody hates cops. Blue Nobody's lives aren't to... blue lives. A, a yeah. black life is a human being. A blue life is a job. Exactly. Let's stop f***ing confusing that. Absolutely. But this is the rhetoric that you hear. And it's like, it's like we can't have adult conversations about it. It's like, hey, all right, cool. So, like, if you hear, uh, you know, uh, defund the police and it triggers you, it's like, why don't you find out more about it before you well, start running your mouth? child. You know, if you're getting triggered by words, you're a fucking child. I'm sorry. I, I hate to break it to people. Stop being so fucking sensitive. Stop being, stop, stop letting vowel sounds that come out of people's mouths send you into a fucking tizzy. Grow the fuck up. God damn, I'm so sick of that shit. It's, con it's a constant thing. And it's just like, oh my God, we can't say shit. I mean, you talk about, uh, it, you know, people calling people snowflakes and all this and that. And it's from both sides, dude. I mean, I, I see, I see people breaking down They're all down acting over like words. snowflakes and it's all fake. It's all, oh my God, how could you say that? Uh, don't use feign. the word ex Eskimo, they're Inuits. Are you a yeah. fucking Inuit? Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Right, stop being outraged on behalf of people. Yeah. That's the most disingenuous bull. You know when you know why people do that? There's only one reason. It's their fake way of making themselves feel like good people. That's yeah. all that's about. If yeah. if you're if if you're not there to be insulted, like I when I say some shit and I use a word that freaks somebody out, and they're like, oh my god, you shouldn't say that. And I'm like, are they even here? Is is the person I'm talking about right now even fucking here right. to be insulted by what I'm saying? Right. And you're not even in that category. What the fuck is the problem? Right. And sometimes it's just like, and it's just a joke or whatever the case is. And it's like, oh my God, just settle the fuck down. You oh, know how many- it's a joke, I don't like, even, I can't even. Like, like I remember- If I'm joking, everyone needs to shut the fuck up, man. Take a joke. Either laugh or don't laugh. Don't fucking lecture me about whether it's the right thing to say or not. Fuck you. Yeah. I make, I, I make, I love Koreans. I make Korean jokes <laughs> all the fucking time. Uh, you know, it's it's fucking funny. It's hilarious. It's absurd. And this is what I do. I don't. I yeah. I've never. I I would never wish harm on any human. It, or, the, well, or let's give people an example. But here's a, like my my phone is from Samsung, which is a Korean yeah. country. So if it if it if I if I want to send the word cut and it auto corrects it to bunt, yeah, I'll say f Koreans, yeah, because Chancler and I think that shit is funny. Okay, yeah. and and if you don't suck it. I don't care. It's what it is. Or fucking suck a Kung Pao chicken. I don't care. Whatever the fuck Koreans cook. Who cares? Fucking Koreans. Oh my God. I think that's Chinese. I'm triggered. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the point is that it's like, you know, listen, like, you know, sometimes it's just a fucking joke. People get all up in arms about shit that you shouldn't even be getting up. I remember uh, the Black Eyed Peas did a song called uh, "Let's Let's Get Retarded," yeah. and it was just like whatever. And it's like, and they had oh, to change God. it to "Let's and they Get had it Started." Try to, let's get it started, and yeah. it was just like, what's what's wrong with the word "retarded"? Like in that so, in its context, right? Everything yeah. is context, right? Like here's the thing, right? You're my best friend. I've yeah. I've I've, I've said this many times on the podcast. I will continue saying it because my love for you is boundless. So, um, you animal. Sorry, I'm finally getting into a better mood. So, Good. anyway. I'm stroke your beard. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's the persistent rumor. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... So when so there are there are many times when we're talking and you call me nigga. So not once in twenty years of you saying that to me have I ever gotten upset because I understand the fucking context. And here's the thing: in the handful of times that you've been angry with me, you've not said that to me. No. So you've only used that word in the context of colloquialism and 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 you know uh, closeness and all that other between friends right that's a term so, of endearment in the Bronx so I'm never going to get upset about that yeah now some fucking cracker stranger rolls up on me and uses that word we have another fucking context yeah okay exactly 
And so, and that's, and that's really what it's about, right? It's that, it's that your intent, what is your intent when you're trying to, right. like, when you're trying to like really, um, insult somebody, right? Like that's unequivocal. You don't, you don't, you don't mistake that for, you know, a, like, you know what I mean? Like, well, right. like we're, we're talking about just simply saying the word, like, let's say for instance, like you just said the word, you know, like just to, to explain the word, right? Like, do we have to say like the N word really? Like, is it, is it to the point? Like, I, and I'm oh. not, and, and I'm not, and I'm not saying like, you know, that like, listen, like I growing up in the Bronx, like it's, it's Hispanics and blacks out there. When I see somebody, it's basically just, hey, what's up, man? You know, whatever. And you'd give them dap and whatever. And it's like, and then I move outside to the suburbs and whatever. And I got to cool it with that because it's, I understand that that's a, that's a thing that happens here. That whether you're light skin or black, whatever, you're my bro. And this is cool. And it's, and people that know you know you. And that's what's up. And that's how we handle things. And we move on. Fat Joe says it in his songs because of that very reason. Like, I, you know, that's just something that we're used to because like that's part of our culture. But mm -hmm. once you step outside of here, it kind of gets a little bit weird and you can't really go around saying that, especially if you got light skin. So the issue really becomes, it's like, what is your intent to me? Right? right. Like if you, if, if you know what I mean? Like if you real cool and everything's chill, it's okay, you know, and I, and, and if you're dark and you know, like, I'm just not going to be like, oh, you know, what's up, my, you know, and just give you that because I don't and know here, you. And, and here's I don't... the ultimate point. If you're, if you're talking to me mm -hmm. and and you say it, you say, you refer to me as Nick. If I don't get upset, everybody else around us needs to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Cause that's don't thing. get upset on my behalf. I don't need your proxy vote. Yeah. I know, I know this dude. I know what he's saying. I know why he's saying it. Stay the fuck out of it. Yeah. Cause that's the shit that really annoys me is like, it, it, if if the person who is the theoretical like if I use the word retarded, and and there are no retarded people around, what's the problem? I you know I remember I used the word midget and somebody said you know like oh. uh, don't use the word midget like, well what what should I use like you know, and it was that after. one that one fucking annoys me, it, it, and I'll tell you why. First of all, midget's a medical term. But let's say it's gained some other kind of association that's mm -hmm. negative. Some ill kind of Don't by any, by, by any means, do not tell me it's the same as nigger. Because I've heard yeah. little people saying that. Yeah. And you fucking midgets need to shut the fuck up. I'll yeah. fight you. I don't care. You're little. I can take you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, yeah. if you have an objection to that, have an objection to that. Do not tell me it's the same as calling a black man. You yeah. know why I know it ain't the same? Because I don't see a long history of midget lynchings. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Stop trying to fucking co-op something that is not part of your world. It's disingenuous and it's fucking bull agreed but but that's the point it's like you know it's like when do we stop this when do we stop that for instance we get to a point where it's like just okay refuse. basically just like refuse to play along like you know yeah. i'll put a link to the to the thing that i did a chocolate chat on the word and really what was bothering me was the n word when people say the n word it's it's it, it, like i and i, I don't it. mean the word I mean, when people use that stupid fucking phrase, N-word. Uh, no, I know I'll what put, you I'll mean. I'll put a link to that video because it's, fucking, it's it. ridiculous. I understand it when people are, are saying like, you know, saying it on like radio or TV or saying like that. Because, I don't. You know, for censorship. Listen, I don't. That's a whole nother, that, that's a whole nother show, which we'll have, we'll probably make but time that, for. But that bullshit is what contributes to everyone's being a fucking baby about all this. Yeah, right. And it's like, you know, and, and everything's about your intention. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, like you, I remember somebody, uh, there was a comedian who said, it's like, oh man, people are really racist in Boston. You know what I mean? But they're slick about it. You know, they'll call you, you know, they'll be like, oh yeah, he's like, uh, he's, he's a Monday. And he's like, what do you mean a Monday? He's like, nobody likes Mondays, you know? And so the word Monday is benign. It's just a day, right? 
but was his intent was to basically like really demean that person. And so you can take intent is everything. Exactly. So you could so you could take offense to that because he tried to demean you. Don't take offense to the word itself. It doesn't mean anything. Like like listen to the context, right? If I'm just explaining to you something and I use the word right to explain something to you, why are you having a fit about it? I'm using yeah, the word. Yes, some CEO be, got fired over to, that. The yeah. script, right? And yeah, this happens like, all the like time. Like he was, he was saying that it's, it, and it's the same as um, Shane Gillis. Um, he got fired from Saturday Night Live, right? Like three hours after he got the job, because of an old podcast that he was doing, where it was, it was not the content. He was using certain words to describe Asians, but he wasn't saying like i'm shane gillis and i hate chicks. like he wasn't saying that yeah so they just again because oh certain vowel sounds in combinations mm -hmm. they they they're on the list here look down the list oh there it is it's automatically bad no it's a comedy podcast for starters lighten the fuck up I mean, the word, the word originally was intended to be demeaning and I get it. Right. So you, you still which, have to, which word, right. And so the word, the Whatever. word was, I understand the, that. That's but, that context. I, right. Exactly. But here's, but here's the issue though. The, and, and, and I have a bigger issue with words like retarded, right? Because that wasn't designed to be demeaning. That yeah. was designed to describe a condition. Well, right. Nick, I, I, by the way, I, I, I have a feeling that if we go back far enough into the etymology, nigger originally was not derogative. Um, it, I because think it remember, was... the word starts with negro. Right. Right. And then it's sort of like as people were repeating the word it negro. Up, yeah. It picked up its southern accent and it just became. Yeah, yeah, it's dialects and all this other shit. Right. And it became. And, and yes, you know you know that's probably the shortest part of its history yeah. and then and then it immediately became a derogatory thing but you know it 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 doesn't matter like the the word sweetheart is a positive word right but it's easy to use it in a negative way absolutely you know what the fuck are you talking about sweetheart mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know and yeah. and what if it's a dude talking to another dude yeah now you got a whole another layer of so yeah. come at it, me you sweetheart. can't just go by the word that's the point it's not yes. about the word it's about yes. the context and the intention church yeah <laughs> absolutely man um and i and it's just the thing where it's like and back to the word retarded it's like this is the this is the word it's in the dictionary it means that and i understand that it could be used in a derogatory manner but when it's not used in a derogatory manner don't sit there and tell me that i can't use that you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I, I don't want to be an asshole. I'm not, you know, I generally think of myself as a good person. Like, I try yeah. to be an empathetic person. I don't want to insult anybody. There's no reason to. But, like, if I... I mean, you're, I, you're, you're not an asshole. I mean, I'd say you're a bit of a whore, but not I'm an asshole. guilty. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, hey, you know, but that's the thing. It's just, like, to, to, to offend somebody... You know, just because you uh, you you made a vowel sound with your mouth is kind of like ridiculous, and it's and, childish. And it's, and it's a it's a, it's an arrested development that just it, it's it's really just persistent throughout the country. And you know what I mean? And it doesn't occur in in many other countries. Like if you visit watch this, watch how ridiculous it is. I can say the word fornicate. I can't say the word. It means the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fellatio. That's an acceptable word. Can't say job means the same yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. This is childish. This is this is abject childishness to I've be seen... in a society that's like, oh, we have words to describe things that are perfectly acceptable, and other words that describe the same exact things are bad. I've seen women lose their absolute shit just because somebody said the word. Don't go to Australia. Or England. Or England. I mean, like, and we're not even talking about calling her a c I am not saying that we called her a c I'm talking about a dude bang his knee on a desk and said, ah, you c yeah. Right? Just because he hurt his knee on a, on a, on a, on a 
corner of a bed or something. Who knows? Whatever. I've like, called just... more men cunts than I have women, but I, I will call a woman a cunt if she's acting like a cunt. I mean, but the fact that somebody just said the word cunt, in in mm -hmm. a in a non-directive way, and that's way, the just childishness kind of a, that I'm talking about. And that's it's just and ridiculous, that's, right? And it's just like, yo, what, what, what? Who hurt you? <laughs> what? You know what I mean? Like, what occurred in your life that this became the rock you wanted to die on? Like the hill you wanted to die on? Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is the fight you want to have? Like the fact that I said a word that that mixes you up so bad? It's like it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I could understand if I called you that. If I said, "Oh, you're a." Like, you know, I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, 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 I it, it flicked some, some grotesque words to you, whatever. You can feel however you want to feel about it. But when it's just like somebody just saying a word like out of the blue with no context, like, come on, man, get, give me a break, man. This well, is I mean, ridiculous. the example that you gave, the context was someone used a word as a, as a result of something happening that they didn't want to happen. Right. You know, like, you know, I'm driving, someone cuts me off. Oh, you f So what? And and that's another thing. Like, if and even if somebody is insulting you with words, you know, like, gather yourself a little bit. You don't like, have compose, to react. Compose you don't have yourself. To, you don't have to react like a child. Because if, it, here's the thing. Whether someone's cursing or not cursing, it doesn't matter. If someone's trying to hurt my feelings, I'm not going to be hurt by what they're saying to me. Right. I'm going to be upset by the fact that someone is trying to hurt my to. feelings. Yes. That's what I focus on. I don't get... Sh because the moment you concede your emotional stability to vowel sounds out of people's mouths, to mm -hmm. words, mm -hmm. you can be controlled by anybody yeah like i remember my my first wife told me you know if someone calls her a bitch, she'll fight them and i i was 20 years old at the time and i said so anyone can control you with that word right you're 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 responding to something verbal with something physical right so you're automatically wrong as far as I'm concerned. And mm -hmm. it's not just her, obviously. It's everybody that has that ethic where I believe that you never, ever, ever respond to something verbal with something physical. Right. Words are met with words. Physicality is met with physicality. Right. That's how I see it, you know. And nobody can control me with words as a result. It's a good... It's a good... Uh... It's a good place to stand, my friend. And I, I like the way I like the way you roll. <laughs> I, I I mean, it works for me. That's all I know. I mean, it works for me too. I can't say that I've been perfect at that, you know. Um, but you know, um, I I I certainly haven't uh, hit somebody because they called me something. You know what I'm saying? I may have uh, overreacted a little bit because somebody has said something in the past. But you know, to 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 you know to hit somebody because they called you something. I mean, that's, you know, that kind of shows a little bit of weakness to me. So you're, you know? uh, to me, you're completely emotionally unstable. Yeah. You know, and I and listen and, 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 and I've seen it happen. Right. Um, you know, these, these, you know, with guys that think they're tough, you know, and it's just like, you don't know what tough is like, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's like, you know, to me, the toughest guys are the ones that really have a good control of their emotional state. You know, the guys that can think before they react, like, you know, to me, it's like, oh, man, that's that's grit. And like, that's somebody who's been around and has and has some wisdom. You know, that's a that's a that's yeah. a tough guy. You know, you can't stop for every barking dog, man. You know, yeah. Uh, you, know? you know, like Jay-Z said, man, knock that dirt off my shoulder. That's it, man. But um, I'm glad you're feeling a little better, man, because I know that, you know, the the. This Chauvin thing help, is yeah. heavy, man. It is. It is heavy because it, it's it's. I don't. I don't want. I don't want myself to to be nullified so easily and and become complacent because of one thing, and I, and I'm bothered by the overreaction to this. I I get it, man. I really do. I I understand uh, how people have have an emotional 
connection to this. Sure. Um, the George Floyd murder has made my eyes well up on several occasions, mm -hmm. just sitting by myself thinking about it. And yeah. so I get it. But we've got to, I, I think, I, th I would encourage people to just have a more expansive view of the situation and understand that this is just the beginning. And if we don't build on this, then it don't fucking matter. You know, it'll matter to his family to a certain extent. Although no matter what, no matter how much money we pour at these people, no matter uh, uh, the convictions and all that other shit, that man is gone. Yeah. George Floyd is gone forever. So we can't be too satisfied with this. That, that, that's, just, that's just how I'm looking at it. Accountability is the first step. And then we can look at retraining and doing all of the things. I, I just hope that at some point we can have some civil discourse, uh, you know, with, with lawmakers about, like, how do we do this? Because I, I, I just think that too many conversations are getting shut down. I mean, how many... I don't shooters? really care about the conversation. I want the system to be overhauled. F*** the discourse. Let people say or not say whatever they're going to... I want results. Well, I want actions. Yeah, no, I... And gonna, I so whatever it takes to do that, and whoever wants to go along goes along. Whoever doesn't, get the f*** out. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I And I think that the, the, the discourse that I'm talking to is, you know, that... that, that that discourse to be able to say okay cool like are we all on board and let's get the right people on board to to get these things to make these laws to to make because you know like how many mass shootings do we need to see before we're really talking about gun control like well, we haven't reached it yet you know what i'm saying like it's like okay like look like, 20 no, children were killed between and, ages six and seven that didn't do it what will you know what i mean and it's just such a ridiculous what, thing. Uh, it's like, and what's going what's and the, gonna motivate Americans if twenty children, ages six and seven, murdered, did not motivate America? What the fuck will? I don't have an answer for you. Unfortunately, nobody does. It's yeah. a lost cause. Yeah. All so, these dinosaurs have to die off before any progress can be made because there's there's still too many people left that respond to an incident like that with second amendment yeah go fuck yourself man go drop and nobody's even talking dead. and and nobody's even talking about repealing like like repealing the second amendment or even And if they the were away. so what uh, yeah and 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 so and Fucking what? Still, Why is, is an amendment from fucking 1791 more important than the lives of children? Yeah. I don't care about any of this shit. Yeah. Fucking get it done already. Grow a heart. Be, become great. If you yeah. want America to become great, how about giving a fuck about children murdered? Yeah. Maybe start with that. I'd say that. Now nah, he's in a bad mood again. See what you did? Man, anyway. So, hey, listen, let's wrap it up. Um, this has been a weird episode, I know. <laughs> so I was shot out of a cannon, but whatever. Uh, before we end, uh, what we have to do is a shout out to our supporter. We always, we always promise to shout out the names of our Patreon supporter supporters and we have our first one sarah b thank you so much sarah for b. being a for being a top tier a 20 dollar a month supporter uh we love you we value you we appreciate you uh because i know she's out there spreading the word sharing it with her friends um and you know just being very encouraging and, be and very supportive and uh, a sincere thank you from both of us. We're going to upgrade our pencils to Dixon Ticonderoga, girl. <laughs> you heard that? Right there. Mm. Sarah. <laughs> Deuces, girl. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, everybody, for watching. So what do you get when you support the Persistent Rumor on Patreon? You get early access to every episode, all right? You get to see it first. Exclusive content. There is stuff that we're going to put on Patreon that does not exist anywhere else, all right? So you get to have that. Random shout-outs to our supporters 
free coaching with, you know, me, Chocolate Yoda, yours truly. All right. One on one coaching with me free of charge. Also, airtime. All right. You are going to get to be part of the podcast. All right. So all of that starting at five dollars a month. Come on. All of this good stuff. Come on. Go get you some. All right. Uh, thanks again for watching and we'll talk to you soon.